Our Chinese President Xi Jinping is talking of prioritizing strategic ties with Russia on the second day of discussions with counterpart Vladimir Putin in Moscow. Reports suggest fresh deals between the two countries could be on the horizon. The leaders will speak to the media later today. Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Mishustin says ties with China are at their highest level in history. We met President Xi earlier today. Mr. Mishustin emphasized further cooperation between the two countries in, quote, high-tech areas. President Xi and Putin are set to meet shortly for formal discussions of the broad range of topics believed to be on the table. The two met yesterday for nearly five hours of informal talks and a lavish state dinner. President Putin signaled his readiness to discuss Beijing's 12-point peace plan to end the Ukraine war. Reports say President Xi also extended an invitation to his Russian counterpart to visit China this year for the third Belt and Road Forum. And for the latest, Stuart Smith joins us live from Moscow. Uh, Stuart, what outcomes can we expect from today's formal discussions? Well, as he suggested, projects underway, big projects between Russia and China, and these deals will be signed. So to give you a flavour, for example, on joint satellite cooperation, navigational satellites, the Russian and the Chinese system looking to become more closely interoperable. There's energy exports, which is Russia's main contribution to the Chinese economy. In fact, a record broken today in terms of Russia's Gazprom supplies to China. They hit a historical high, well above contractual obligations, Gazprom says. It became China's biggest supplier of gas in January. That's Russia. And also, Russia is now uh, China's biggest ex uh, in China's biggest exporter of crude oil, highlighting how important China has become to the Russian economy, but also to an extent important for the Chinese economy. In terms of uh, joint development, all of this is designed, as both leaders are talking about, to increase and strengthen cooperation between Russia and China. Already, they both say, at historically high levels of uh, partnership. And with that, both leaders are setting to uh, set in stone in effect with these treaties later to be signed later in the day to set in stone the progress made and create a path to future development and future cooperation entrenched in these big infrastructure projects. So important now for Russia when it struggles to get capital investment from anywhere else in the West. All right, apart from economic support, the Kremlin also says both thoroughly discussed China's 12-point peace plan for Ukraine. Are we likely to be seeing any progress on that front? Yeah, that's right. Discussed it, and the Kremlin says it was a serious, detailed conversation with a very thorough exchange of views. And one Kremlin official speaking to Russian media suggested it was that informal meeting on Monday that actually is the most important meeting to have taken place, the details of which we will only find out if either of these two leaders choose to disclose them. But indeed, it was said that the Ukrainian uh, peace plan was discussed. Whether there's going to be any outcome, we can expect to hear later in the day when indeed the two leaders make statements to the press. Having said that, there's no indication that they definitely will or definitely won't. It would, I assume, depend on whether both leaders felt they've made progress when it comes to that or perhaps not. One thing still in doubt as well is whether Xi Jinping will want to talk to the Ukrainian side before making any kind of announcement. Ukraine wants a phone call with Xi Jinping, but it's not clear yet still whether he's willing to accept one. In terms of what Russia and China may agree on, uh, there's certain elements of the fact that NATO is a threat to national security for Russia, which Beijing has said it understands that position. On the other hand, China says that the full sovereignty of all nations must be respected. And for Russia, uh, well, it doesn't see Ukraine as most of the international community sees Ukraine. So that is and has been and will likely be a sticking point in any peace negotiation. Oh, thanks for that. Stuart Smith reporting live to us there from Moscow.